Let's talk about nuclear power. I know, I know. It sounds scary, right? When most people hear nuclear, they think of big disasters or dangerous waste. But what if I told you there might be a safer way to do nuclear power? Stick with me, because this could be pretty exciting. First, let's chat about why regular nuclear power makes people nervous. We've all heard of accidents like Chernobyl or Fukushima. Those were really bad, and they make nuclear energy seem super dangerous. Plus, nuclear plants make waste that stays radioactive for thousands of years. That's a long time to worry about something. But here's where things get interesting. There's this stuff called thorium that could change everything. It's kind of like uranium, the stuff we use in nuclear plants now, but it's different in some really cool ways. Now, before we get into thorium, I want to tell you about something that just happened. China. Yep, that China. Just announced they're building a brand new kind of nuclear reactor. And guess what? It's going to use thorium. This is a big deal, and I'll tell you why in a bit. So, what's so special about thorium? Well, for starters, there's more of it. It's easier to find than uranium. That's good news if we want to make a lot of energy. But that's not even the best part. Thorium is safer than uranium in a bunch of ways. It makes less of that nasty, long-lasting nuclear waste. It's harder to use for making weapons, which is a big plus. And if something goes wrong, it's easier to control. Sounds pretty good so far, right? The reactor China is building isn't just special because it uses thorium. It's also something called a molten salt reactor. Now, I know that sounds like science mumbo-jumbo, but stick with me. This is where things get really cool. Most nuclear reactors today use water to cool things down. But water can be tricky. If it gets too hot, it turns to steam and can cause big problems. Remember those accidents we talked about earlier? Steam was a big part of why they were so bad. But molten salt? It doesn't have that problem. It can get way hotter without causing trouble. And if there's a leak, it just cools down and turns solid. No explosions, no meltdowns. That's a big deal for safety. Now, you might be thinking, if thorium and molten salt reactors are so great, why haven't we been using them all along? Good question. And the answer is, we almost did. Back in the 1950s, some smart scientists in America were working on thorium reactors. They even built one that worked. But then, for a bunch of complicated reasons, like the Cold War, the government decided to stick with uranium reactors instead. Fast forward to today, and China is giving thorium another shot. They've already built a small test reactor out in the desert. It's not making power yet, but it's helping them learn how to build bigger ones. And that brings us back to the big news I mentioned earlier. China says they're going to have a real, working thorium reactor up and running by 2029. That's not too far away. But here's where things get really exciting, or maybe a little tense depending on how you look at it. China isn't just doing this for fun. They've got big plans. See, China has enough thorium to power their whole country for 20,000 years. That's a crazy long time, and they're not planning to keep this technology to themselves. They want to build small thorium reactors that they can sell to other countries. Now, that might sound like a good thing. After all, if thorium reactors are safer and cleaner, shouldn't we want everyone to have them? But some people are worried. They think that if China becomes the world leader in this new kind of nuclear power, it could give them a lot of influence over other countries. So, what's everyone else doing? Are they just sitting back and letting China take the lead? Not exactly, but they're not moving as fast as China is. In America, there's a company called TerraPower. It was started by Bill Gates that's working on a new kind of reactor. It's not exactly the same as what China's doing, but it's pretty cool. They're using molten salt to store energy from their reactor, kind of like a giant battery. Over in Europe, some companies are teaming up to work on thorium reactors too. But they're saying it'll take them until 2035 to have something ready. That's a long time in the world of technology. Now, I don't want you to think this is all smooth sailing. Building these new reactors is tough. There are still a lot of problems to solve. For one thing, molten salt is super corrosive. It eats through a lot of materials. So scientists have to figure out how to build reactors that won't fall apart. And since nobody's ever built a big thorium reactor before, there are a lot of safety rules and procedures that still need to be figured out. 
It's kind of like trying to write the rulebook for a game while you're still inventing it. So, what does all this mean for you and me? Well, it's hard to say for sure. But if thorium reactors work out the way some people hope they will, it could be a big deal. Imagine having a power plant that makes tons of clean energy, doesn't create much dangerous waste, and is really hard to turn into weapons. And what if that power plant was small enough to fit on a truck, so you could bring power to places that don't have it now? That's the dream that thorium reactor fans are chasing, and China is racing to make it happen first. But there's still a lot of work to do. We'll have to wait and see if thorium reactors live up to all the hype. Will they really be as safe and clean as people hope? Can they compete with other kinds of energy like solar and wind? And what happens if China gets there first? These are big questions, and the answers could shape the future of energy around the world. It's kind of exciting, isn't it? And maybe a little nerve-wracking too. As we look ahead, one thing's for sure: the way we make energy is changing fast. Thorium reactors might be a big part of that change, or they might not. But either way, it's going to be really interesting to see how it all plays out. So the next time someone brings up nuclear power, you can tell them about thorium. Who knows? You might just blow their mind with your knowledge of the possible future of energy. In the end, whether thorium reactors become the next big thing or not, it's a reminder that there's always room for new ideas. Even in fields that seem set in stone, there might be a game-changing discovery just waiting to be made, and that's pretty cool to think about. As we wait to see what happens with thorium, it's a good time to think about energy in general. Where does your power come from now? What kind of energy do you want to see in the future? These are big questions, and the answers could shape the world for generations to come. That's all for today's nuclear know-how. If this video lit up your day, don't forget to subscribe. It's like uranium for our channel. Got thoughts? Drop them like neutrons in the comments. Stay curious and I'll catch you next time for more mind-blowing science.